The United States Supreme Court has taken, again, has taken the position that money is a free speech issue. And so you can't put limits, you can't pass a law putting limits on how much people can spend uh, um, in, a federal, uh, in a federal election. Now maybe you can do that in the county election um, for local government, but you can't do that, the Supreme Court will not let you do that in a federal election. The, so I have to explain to people, you don't like Citizens United, that case? You can't override that with an act of Congress. The only way you could override a Supreme Court decision is to have a constitutional amendment. And it is real hard to amend the Constitution in this country. It takes a two-thirds vote of each house and three has to be passed by three-quarters of the states. So the best you can do is have disclosure. We have suggested that Congress ought to pass a law requiring every organization of any kind that mentions a federal candidate by name any time during a two-year election cycle be required to disclose all their contributors to the Federal Election Commission. So at least we know where this money's coming from. That would be legal. The courts would permit disclosure, but they won't permit limits on the total amount of spending. Now, uh, we've also made some other recommendations, some of which are, are, are a little controversial. Um, some years ago, um, Congress permitted earmarks. That's a, uh, where a member of Congress or a member of the Senate could designate how money would be spent in an appropriations bill in their particular district or their particular state. Unfortunately, this was abused. One of my college classmates from the University of Missouri, whom I did not know, uh, Randy Duke Cunningham, actually sold earmarks to defense contractors and took bribes. And he, uh, uh, he was uh, sent to jail, spent a little time as a guest to the government, as he should have. Uh, that should never happen. Other people earmark, used earmarks to, to, to uh, fund some somewhat questionable projects. What we have suggested is that earmarks be returned, but there with a requirement that the member's name has to be put on it. So in the committee report, you know which House member or which Senate senator earmarked the, that spending, and it could only be spent in the House member's district or the senator's state. It couldn't be sent, spent somewhere else. The reason for this is, one, this would give members of Congress some skin in the game. They would have a reason to support appropriation bills. Right now, often, appropriation bills are not passed by the beginning of the fiscal year, October 1st, and the government operates on a continuing resolution. This is a, a crazy way to fund the government, quite frankly. You could never fund a business this way, not knowing how, what, how much money you were going to have for your staff and for what you were going to do until half of the year was gone, but that's the way Congress has operated. So we've recommended going back on a limited basis, going back to earmarks. Um, not everybody agrees with that. We understand that. Uh, this was a, considered to be a reform, um, but I think that uh, going back to that system would be helpful. Also, we have recommended having a national primary day for all elections for the House and the Senate. Not for the presidency. States could do their presidential primaries and their caucuses whenever they wanted to. And, uh, but all primaries for the House and the Senate would be on the same day. The reason for this is that would hopefully have a larger turnout, that the news media would pay attention to what was going on, focus attention on the fact that this is primary day in the United States, and that maybe we get more people voting. One of the problems we have with primaries is that in some states, you register by party, and uh, you can, you can in some, some of those states you can register as an independent, but you can't vote in, the, if you're an independent, you can't vote in the party primary of, uh, of either party. You're, you're frozen out of the process, even though in many cases the whole election is in the primary. Now, in other cases, independents choose not to vote. They don't want to be affiliated in any way with one party or the other, but then they are conceding the outcome to a relatively small group of voters, in many cases ideologically extreme, to pick the candidates in their, in their parties.